Many social issues are rooted in stereotyping that leads to prejudices. And as Christians, we can have spiritual stereotyping that leads us to kind of a type of dismemberment of the body of Christ if we're not careful. Join us for a discussion about being mere men on the way. Welcome to The Way with Leslie King and Scott Grimmett. See the ocean, how it sways in the sun. Keeping your stories in its mood. For many years, I grew up uh, in Houston. Very diverse cultures, very exciting. Love the idea of different nationalities, different foods. Really a whole lot of fun. Unfortunately, Individuals that would find diversity exciting and fun, others would find diversity and differences in people to be at the root of a lot of social issues, um, and they would stereotype others, They would, and just eventually this would lead to prejudices right. and things that maybe weren't true about other people. We just didn't understand them. And I think what we need to be addressing is the fact that stereotyping comes from deep within somebody. Right. There are these triggers they have found that actually bring it forth even out of reasonable people. And I think for Christians, we need to be careful of that because we can actually begin to have stereotyping about others in the faith and start to make assumptions that maybe their differences, maybe their denomination, maybe what they're doing within their walk makes them wrong or less valuable than we are ourselves. And I think that we can yeah. kind of see this too. When we meet others out there, we'll immediately start talking about what denomination we're in or where we go to church. And we start to focus on things that divide us more so than unite us. Right. And so there is kind of a spiritual stereotyping that takes place that we need to be careful of. And this kind of thing can be mostly external, but it really does come from an internal struggle that we're going to, you know, talk about today in this particular show. Right, right. This is the silent killer of our faith, you know, like high blood yeah. pressure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and we have to be very, very careful about it. Yeah. But we also have to walk with some caution, too, because like on all things, there has to be a little bit of balance. And as we yeah. get into the show, uh, we are going to d dive a little bit deeper into that and see how, okay, we can't throw the baby out with the bath water. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's got to be some balance applied here. Right. You know, we can't obviously be uh, stereotyping people like you're d discussing. That's completely antithetical to our to our faith. But at the same time, you, you, can, you can't uh, accept just any kind of behavior either. So Right, right. There is a balance there. And we need to be very careful of not dismembering the body of Christ. And I think that when stereotyping kind of comes into the faith and it's a spiritual type of stereotyping, we can begin to create division in the body of Christ, more so building up the unity. And so Paul actually is addressing this in 1 Corinthians and it's chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. And we're going to kind of surf along chapter 3 a little bit here, and we're going to unpack what Paul's talking about. So I'm going to go ahead right. and read that real quick. And he says, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly. Mere infants in Christ, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready. Indeed, you were still not ready. So Paul is addressing something going on in the church in Corinth, and they're struggling here. Paul is actually addressing the division that's within the church, and he starts out in chapter 1, and he's talking about how they're divided and how they need to be together on things, and he's beginning to lay the foundation, and he's telling them, some of you are saying you follow Apollo, Peter, or Paul, and it's dividing you. You're boasting about it, and what's happening here is that you're acting kind of like your infants. You're right. not growing up in the faith. Right. James addressed this, too. Okay. In one of in his in his epistle, remember he said uh, he was talking about people who were saying if a rich if a rich man comes in you, you give him the, a good seat and then you tell right. some poor brother you sit there, you know he was talking the, about the very same kind of discrimination, right? right? That has always been a no no in the body of Christ. It is never looked on right by God, and I'm and you know woe to us if we ever acquiesce to it. Well, I think that's a good call out there because we can have spiritual stereotyping when it comes to the fact of thinking about the carnal man. And so being merely human or merely judging divides us, 
but we should have spiritual judgment more so that unites us. We need to be aware it's okay to judge, not in the sense that we're passing judgment for sentencing on somebody, right. but that we're aware of who's in the body, what their differences are. And we see Paul come into the end of chapter 2, and he says that there are mere judgments among you because you're focusing so much on things that are not spiritual, and the spiritual judgments are about uniting. Right. Right, but we we should really pause right now and and okay. as we get into the show, just build it out logically for, as you might in a laboratory. So let's okay. let's establish the acid test. Let's get the, the baseline straight, and that is uh, that we separate that out from the from the notion of doctrines and things okay. in certain segments of the body of Christ that are indeed out of place and need to be confronted. Right. Okay. There are there are many sure. places in the body of Christ. Now, when I talk a lot like this. I always have to quantify it because I have uh, several brothers and sisters that I love very much, and they're in churches that are doing things really well. Okay. So I'm like, I'm not talking about your church specifically, guys. I'm talking, I'm making the comments that I'm making about the overall body of Christ, the two plus billion people or however many right, there yeah, are, yeah. Uh, and incorporating several denominations. We have denominations in the world right now that are doing some very wrong, very evil, wicked things. They are sure. incorporating things into their doctrines, into their laity, that are completely antithetical to our faith. They are sure. completely contrary to the Word of God. As we're going through and we're making sure that we're not discriminating against anybody or mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. using stereotypes, we have to be very careful. Right. Some of those stereotypes run uh, parallel to matters of holiness, yeah. matters of right. Ra- justice, matters of right thinking as it pertains to the gospel of Christ. Right, so the spiritual stereotyping should not be used against the fact of determining if people are walking in obedience to the Bible, and it should not be used in a way that we're not... And we're not saying... We're saying don't spiritually stereotype, but we're not saying just allow anyone to do anything and then you let it go because you're afraid of stereotyping. And right now, culture out there has made it to where if you speak up about anything that is um, diverse or not inclusion, um, whether it's true or not and how you're feeling, that all of a sudden you're a hater, so everybody's going silent. Right. And And we don't want people to remain silent, but we don't want individuals to start engaging in, I'm assuming that because you're a part of this, um, that you're all like that, and then that makes me better, because that's where we're headed with this. Or worse, you know. Right. In order to be able to manage the prejudices that we're talking about, we Mm -hmm. have to successfully disentangle it from right. the things that are very important, which are matters of holiness, matters of Scripture, matters of right. living right before God, honoring Him, not accepting Absolutely. sin in our in, in our zeal to make sure that nobody is mistreated. Absolutely. So I think that's a, a really good point, because Paul is actually bringing up the fact of there are some good teachers. Apollo, he was a Greek, yeah. knew the Scriptures, argued fervently against the Jews about it. Peter, we all know Peter, all right? Uh, And then Paul. So we are talking right now about things that are um, in alignment, but yet the followers here are struggling with what to do. And so we're going to go ahead and move along with uh, how Paul addresses this. And we get into chapter 3 now, verses 3 and 4, and he says, "'You are still worldly, for since there are jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly?' You are not acting like men, but you are acting like mere men. And that's a little bit of a paraphrase. Right. But um, And when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, and you are just mere men when you're doing that. And so if he's getting at this idea that your self-identification on where you're at means you're really boasting and arguing and quarreling right. about the fact of you're not those guys. Yeah. And that is never good for the body of Christ to go, I'm this because I'm glad I'm not like you. Kind right. Of thing. Star belly sneeches, huh? <laughs> That's and, right. And, and you have things like jealousy coming into play. Absolutely. But again, we have to use, uh, we have to be balanced about it. You know, jealousy mm-hmm. in itself, you know, it has been uh, labeled as an evil in itself. Correct. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, in the body of Christ, I believe it can be, in most in most cases, is evil. Right, right. Uh, jealousy itself, however, is not an evil entity. God himself said he is jealous. He's a jealous God. Jealousy yeah. is how we know that we're loved by somebody. That's if you, right. If you have a gal who doesn't, who isn't jealous about you, who doesn't mm. care what you're doing with, who, you, who you're doing it with, yeah. bro, you got some troubles. Right. Uh, there, needs, there, needs, <laughs> there needs to be a concern 
and even a level of worry about what's going on with my loved ones. Right. That's but, the jealousy But part. where jealousy comes in the place, though, where it is a, a, a dicey thing. Okay, uh, yeah. It, it is, uh, it's one of those things that if it does go into error, okay. if it does go into sin, if it becomes weaponized, it becomes not only evil, but a, but a very uh, concentrated form of evil. Absolutely. Uh, Jealousy can lead to a lot of things bad. that, boy, take, yeah. you, take you where you shouldn't. It's right. It's like, like all of, all, many things on earth, you know, we've said this before, Paul said, all, all things are permissible, not all things are beneficial. Right. This mm-hmm. falls into that category, sure. you know, but jealousy in its right category, in its right place mm-hmm. within a marriage, say, right. is a good thing because it, it shows you that your gal or your guy likes you. They, they, they are invested in they're you. They're invested and they're, and they're invested with their heart and their right. emotions and everything. And that's what the whole statement about God being a jealous God. Right. He wants us to be his, and he wants us to choose him, and it makes him passionate about it. And that's what that jealousy thing is right. you're talking about. But in the body of Christ, between okay. brothers and sisters, it has no place. No, absolutely and, and not. All, and all it does is lead into the sin of envy, which you know mm-hmm. is, is part of coveting. So it's one of the seven deadlies. Yeah, and, absolutely. And yeah, it's yeah. mentioned, you know, if you want to go into the Mosaic uh, law, it, yeah. you're talking about coveting. That's right. Um, it's so, a covetous thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So jealousy has no place in the body of Christ in that way. No. But why on earth would you even go there? Right. Who, ca- who cares uh, in the end what, you know, who, who your preacher is right. in that way? Absolutely. Y- he, your preacher should be endeared to you personally because you identify with him or her Mm -hmm. in the body of Christ because they bring the Word of God to you and they minister to you. Yeah, it's a matter of fact almost. Right. It's It's like like, it's familial. That's right. Yeah, that's why it should be important to you, not because that person's better than this person. you don't need... Yeah, you don't need to hide where you go to church or who your pastor is, but when it turns into like what Paul is saying here, he's saying, you guys are jealous and you're quarreling, and it's because you're saying, I follow this one, that one, or this one again, Right. and that's bringing them to a point where it's causing division... It's causing a type of stereotyping in which that if I feel like you're over here and you're doing this, and then you're saying that you guys have a better preacher, right? then all of a sudden you're making me jealous, and I'm already telling you, well, we're doing this over here. I'm already creating division through a spiritual stereotyping that's not healthy at all. Well, it's not just about preaching. It's about numbers, you know. That's our right, church nickels has, and noses. Yeah, our, <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. Our church has 5,000. You know, you're, you, you're not a, you're not an original um, apostle. Yeah, My preacher has signs and wonders. Mine argues um, it's a cute little church. You get, it's a cute little church you go to, uh, that's, <laughs> right. that sort of thing. Well, you, that's exactly it. But, but, you know what? I don't care if there's only two people there. If the if if the Holy Spirit's there, I'm in. That's right. Well, and it's clear in the scriptures, where two or three are, there I will be. Jesus said. That's so right. He makes it very clear. And that's why that's why home churches are going to be a very powerful thing in, in the yep. move to come. Mm-hmm. Home churches are a big deal. It's it, that's a legitimate yeah. move in the body of Christ, and right. people ignore it to their own detriment. Right. Absolutely. Well, and I think that's where we're going here because worldly, the way Paul is putting it, means jealousy and quarreling. And it's coming out of the carnal part of the of, of the individuals in these churches, right? They want to be aligned with somebody who's good. They want to be aligned with the right kind of teaching. And that's natural for all of us. We all want to make sure we're in align with God, we're growing, we're doing the right thing. That's not a bad thing. But when it gets to where we go... The herd well, mentality? Know, uh, the herd mentality? Yeah, well, we don't want to necessarily have that. No, no, that's what I'm saying, but so, that's what yeah. they get into. It's well, like, they do. They it, that's the that's the stereotyping kind of thing there, right? And if I were under the tutelage of Apollos, and I'm getting puffed up mm-hmm. because I'm in his church, all of a sudden I'm thinking that his blessing of being a good teacher or an orator means that I'm going to have that well, or I'm going to be a better in a better position with that than you are. Right. And that necessarily isn't true. Well, that's, that sort of braggadocia has no place. Mm-hmm. It really just does not. And and. If if you have moved along your sanctification walk it, for any length of time, you should have been trained up out of that. Right. That's that's romper room stuff. That's infancy. And that's what yeah, Paul was you're, talking about. You're drinking about. milk. If that if you're still doing that, yep. and some people have been in the church for 20, 30 years, and they're still acting this way, they have all the signs, the good signs of being devoted to their church. They're there right. at six a.m. They're opening the doors. They're yeah. But in their heart, it's like it's because 
this is the light of the community more so than somebody right. else. This, the, it's the the focus is in the wrong place. Right. Uh, uh, we're not here to judge anybody's heart, but at the same time, it does happen. That well, is a real, it, a real thing. It does, and that's what Paul's addressing here. They're they're. You, we got to be committed and passionate, and it's okay to really love what your church, your congregation, whether small or large, is doing. But you shouldn't get to the point to where you start to think, well, we're doing it better and more right than others. And that's what the quarreling is. What else right. could it be about? What could he be addressing? Yeah, we always get very excited when we have a book devotional that accompanies a particular podcast series. And in this instance, we have a devotional by the name of Walking in the Truth that accompanies our pod series, The Battle for the Truth. Never in modern times has the truth been under attack like what we are currently seeing. Vicious debates are raging over the sanctity of life, over sexuality, over gender identity, over the very existence of a loving God. Although Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 sternly warns against calling evil good and good evil, this seems to be the sad condition of our society these days. This devotional is dedicated to the only absolute truth that we have in this fallen world. The Holy Bible and the scriptures therein are given to us by a loving God to help us find our way home. The attack on the truth is simply the process of calling the goodness of God evil and the evil of Satan good and it's a blatant attempt to try to bring down the goodness of God to be equal to man or even below Satan. Walking in the Truth devotional covers key scriptures ranging anywhere from the testimony of truth in Jesus to how the Holy Spirit is involved in our walk as Christians to lead us into truth. And then it comes to a close with the judgment of the truth from God, which is kind of a rather heavy chapter, but really brings it home to make sure folks understand that God is paying very close attention to how we accept the truth and how we apply it to our lives. Readers will also have a personal reflection and prayer section for every verse covered. To learn how you can purchase Walking in the Truth, come visit our bookstore on thetruthandthelife.com and thank you for taking your time to support the Truth and the Life broadcast. So we're gonna go ahead and move along and surf to the next uh, peak here with the scripture. So in verse five, Paul says, what after all is Apollos? What is Paul? Only servants through whom you you came to believe as the Lord has assigned each one of us. And so it's not about being special. So Paul is even talking about himself here and just tells them we're just servants. Apollos is just a servant. Peter is just a servant. You are just a servant. That's right. And that's what we should be focusing on as opposed to this one has more giftings than another. This one has more wisdom than another. Right. The fact is, is it doesn't come down to how special you are, but how well you're serving others with those. And if you're not, or if you're getting to a point where you start to feel like you're being puffed up and you're more special than others, let that be kind of a check in the spirit that means you need to put your spirit in check. When you study Paul's epistles from a higher vantage from okay. a top- topographical standpoint. They go up, drill up 10,000 feet. All right, I'm with you. Uh, later on in his his ministry, he wrote another epistle to his uh, adopted son of the faith, Timothy. Okay, Timothy. And, and right. we've addressed this before, and he made some very dire predictions as to what was going to be the state of the body of Christ in today's day. And right. we are seeing these things. And in those epistles, he warned us that you know, mm-hmm. you know, the, we had to be on guard for from doctrines of demons. We had to be on guard from right. people who would be acting in many of the ways that you've you've discussed. Mm-hmm. Lovers of pleasure rather than of lovers, the, and of, of, lovers of God. And... Uh, you know, uh, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Mm-hmm. These are the things he was warning about. And so, uh, once again, I'm I'm advocating a balanced approach here. I'm, a, right. I'm advocating okay. for fair. keeping a fair. a fair eye on what you're discussing here because it is right. absolutely important that we keep these things straight. Sure, uh, you know, knock the romper room stuff off. Quit focusing on the on the on the right. fleshy aspects of going to church. Right. Put your binky down. That's right. <laughs> but <laughs> at the same time, we have to absolutely be absolutely certain that we don't become confused and just accept any behavior of standard in absolutely. our in our zeal to not right. rub anybody wrong and not to be. Uh, dealing with uh, with uh, overgeneralizations. You know? Right, absolutely. And I think that in, in the scriptures you're talking about, he's um, speaking directly to Timothy about the fact of teachers and those 
who are going to be false, who are going right. to draw people to them, who are going to be carnal. Paul here, interesting enough, is talking about the congregation right. and how now they're going astray. So we all have a responsibility right. to be humble and to realize that our differences create value and excitement. And if there are differences, sometimes it's going to show favor that God has over a position or a talent or a gifting that somebody else has. But if we're together, we're, you know, high tide raises all boats. That's right. And that's where we need to be instead of worried about the fact of somebody else is doing something good. Because Paul, Peter, and Apollos all had very unique giftings. Right. And they had unique backgrounds. But Paul brings a common denominator here, and it is we're all servants. That's right. And when we lose sight of that, that's mm-hmm. when things go awry. Absolutely. If you're standing up in front of people and you're singing, if God has given you the talent to do that, be absolutely certain that you are in touch with the Holy Spirit and you are conveying more yep. than just music when you stand before people. Absolutely. I, I would far rather listen to somebody who has a, a very mediocre talent, but is channeling the actual Spirit of God That's right. when he or she sings than to, than to be in the presence of the most talented singer on planet mm-hmm. who is up there basically just to get their 15 minutes of fame and puff themselves up. Yeah, who's going to use we their Christian that. song to cross over to secular music. We have seen that. So we've, another we've, example. We've seen so that, they're, they're, they're in it for the wrong reasons, and um, that's I mean, really unfortunate. See, I'm a preacher's kid. I was born and raised in this stuff. I know how church politics works. It's a real thing, and it's nasty. Yeah, It's yeah. ugly. And there are people who spend all their time in church as though they are trying to make up for every disappointment they have outside the walls. Their expectations have not been met in the real world, what they would term as the real world. So they use that microcosm of the church to uh, satisfy right. or to sate the, 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 the desires that they want to have uh, outside. The, what they don't right. get outside, they like to try to manifest in there. That's not what that's for. No. You know, th- this is not a this is not a, a microcosm that we are to use for our own gratification. Sure, you know, sure. We're there to praise the Lord. We're there to lift other people up. We're there right. to serve. We're there to be servants, and that's where you start to move on to solid food. And Paul was talking about that. He tells right. them, "I couldn't give you solid food. You weren't ready for it." And the reason why is the previous two chapters. He's telling them, you're unspiritual. You're bragging about teachers and who you follow. You're arguing. You're jealous. You're quarrelsome. You're unspiritual. And I didn't bring you on, blowing you along faster with more things than you're desiring because it's all about your faith. It's all about your growth. And you're not focusing on the fact that you will grow when you serve others, but you're not going to grow if you get all boastful about the church you belong to or the teacher you're following or the podcast you listen to. You know, or the YouTube channel that you subscribe to. Right, and much of our discussion has to do is aimed at the lines of demarcation between the denominations. And when you get right down to right. it, yeah, yeah. When you again drilling up to the ten thousand foot level, mm-hmm. where so that we can see the whole body of Christ, you know, much of what we're talking about here are the differences, the salient differences that exist between the denominations. Yeah, and many of them don't even talk to one another, right? Or, or nor would they ever. Now, you right. that's always struck me as a very great sadness. Yeah, hence you... the dismemberment comment at the beginning of our show. There's no bigger point where there's dismemberment of the body right. than on Sundays. Right. Well, the the, uh, the renewal of the body of Christ will come. Okay. Uh, we are the great outpouring of the mighty Holy Spirit will come. You know. Right. I, right. I know I sound like Linus in the patch when I say that. You know, it's the okay. Great, the great pumpkin's coming, but it that is coming. Yes. It has been prophesied not only by contemporary prophets, but actually you find it in the Word of God that the great outpouring, the the latter rain, is coming. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ will have a clean bride when he, when he takes her up. Yeah. Uh, when the the renewed body of Christ is going to look a lot different than it does right now, because right now, absolutely, uh, the churches, you know, there are many denominations as we as we know, and some right. of them are are better are more in line with Scripture than others. Some right. are completely off the off the map. Correct. Um, won't dive into that right now. That gets off way into the weeds. Right. But right. The big thing is, is that we have two schools of thought basically. That separate us right now, Primary, and then yeah. and then there are there are causeways that go out from there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so it, it separates out even further than that. But the two main things that separate the body of Christ right now is a matter of holiness, right. and then spirit filled churches. You right. have most of your uh, most of your big lines of demarcation split on those two lines right now. Now right. we have those we have churches out there. That care about neither of those things. I mean, so absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, they're, I'm not they're, saying... they're interested in a lot of different right. And this holiness thing, just to clarify for our, our listeners or those viewing, 
those who really anchor the scriptures, right. they walk the line pretty close. Yep. They're very detailed. They're the jot and the tittle group. Yep. Know a lot of them, good godly people and godly men, right. but taking that too far sometimes can really That's not right. take you where you need to go. And then the other side of the Spirit right. is talking about those who... Um, have the Spirit, they're really in tune with the Spirit, they're operating, they believe in it, they're expecting it. There's so much dysfunction, though. um, Exactly. On that side of it, too, it can go too far to where there's disorder, there's craziness going on, and some of them are are hearing from themselves more so than they're hearing from the Spirit. So both of those are camps that uh, Shooter has brought up, and that's important because those are the two camps right now that kind of are the stereotypical spiritual divisions within the body. Right, but what did Jesus say he wants? What did Jesus say Father wants? Okay. He sat across a well once. All right. And talked to a very worldly woman, and he told right, her... Samaria. That's right. He right. told her what the Father actually wants. Okay. He wants, uh, he wants people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. How about that? Spirit-filled and holiness. That's right. All right, I'm following so you So the here. body of Christ, when it is finally renewed, when the great outpouring happens, okay, yeah. when all that happens... When the call it a revival if you want to. When the great revival that we every I'm hearing it everywhere, not okay. just in small c- corners. Everywhere I look and turn, I keep a, a, a thumb on the the pulse of the body body of Christ in many yeah. corners. Everyone's talking about the coming revival. Everyone can okay. feel it. God is about to move. He's going to bring. He's going to bring both together. Is what you're saying. You better believe it. He's going to right. coalesce this. He's going. One, one day you'll worship in spirit and truth. Or those are the kind of worshipers God's looking for. That's right. So it's coming Holiness right out of that and power. Right. Not one or the other, and certainly not one extreme or the other. That's right. Um, and so let's look real quick here at the next set of verses, and they're that's not sequential, right? We're going to skip to verses. 21 through 23 in 1 Corinthians, and here's what Paul tells him. So then, no more boasting about men. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death, the present or the future, all are yours. You are of Christ, and Christ is of God. He's bringing it around and saying, you guys are boasting about things that aren't important. It's stunting your growth. You're still in the nursery. Quit arguing about who you follow. Right. You know, this whole thing about false stereotyping of people based on their church they're in, you know, and, and this is going on to this very day. We should not be boasting about who we are. No. We should be boasting about who Jesus is, and we should be taking the time to build each other up in our differences, knowing that it's okay to be different. That's, it is. And some of the dearest brothers and sisters I've mm-hmm. met were in denominations that I have almost nothing in common with, Absolutely. except for Jesus Christ. Yeah, a good example of that is you know a place that you and I went to many years ago. Okay, uh, to protest a very bad thing, we went to a protest an abortion clinic. Remember that? I do. Some of the greatest, some of the most dear brothers and sisters in Christ I met were some of my Catholic brothers and sisters that were Absolutely. there towing that line. Absolutely. And I was like, I came away from that deeply moved. And okay, these are great people example. That, these people that I, you know, would I have much uh, theologically in 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 common with them? Probably not. No. But it didn't matter. They we were on the line together. They, they were out there, heartfelt, supporting the right thing. And Tears I'll tell you what, I remember face. those days and those events. And there weren't a whole lot of Protestants out there. No, no, no. We you were. know, so I think that um, coming into it is a matter of the heart and serving and doing the right thing, and not necessarily a matter of stereotyping each other based on denomination. Right. At the same time, to your point, keep that in the balance of going, that doesn't mean you accept anything that comes along. No. And so we got to be careful of that as well. We've done yeoman's work in the last several shows, setting the, setting the table that That's right. we, have to ha- we have to keep truth in, mm-hmm. the, in the center pocket. Right. We do. We have to keep absolutely certain that we are representing God, representing the gospel, right? Uh, and, I hear you. and walking with him in spirit and in truth. Right. That is all that matters. We can't do that if we're if we're indulging just any kind of do- doctrine of demon or, or or wicked thing that maybe some of these denominations are doing. That's right. So, you know, there is a time and place for confrontation. We don't like it, but right. but it but for uh, by definition for us to stand up make any kind of a stand at all. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to take a stand sometimes. So right. we're not going to blanketly condemn that, but at the same time, you know, where right. you can meet, remember that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Absolutely. That, so the stereotyping is very different than the fact of having sober judgment right. about orthodoxy, the alignment of scriptures in a way 
that assures that we're following what God is telling us. That's right. And so I think that's real important. Remember, remember that our connection is with Him first. Vertical first. Vertical first. Horizontal second. That's right. Absolutely. All right, we're going to just do a real quick recap of some of the things we talked about, and that is mere men focus on differences, but godly men on spiritual unity. Right. And so that's what Paul's getting at. He's thinking you're mere men, you're infants, you're not growing in the faith, you got stunted spiritual growth because you're boastful and you're thinking you need to be important or you think somebody else is more important when actually it all comes back to the fact of only one that's important is Jesus. That's right. Be sanctified. Be sanctified. You, 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 have, to, you have to indulge your sanctification walk. It mm-hmm. is not... Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's not an elective. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm following you. So, all right, we're going to go on to number two, and that is Christian infants boast about the men or the man that they follow, but the mature Christian talks about who they serve and how they serve and how much more they need to serve. And so even serving isn't a point of boasting, and that's what we need to realize. We have, we have nothing to boast about. No, because you know? the, the sanctified person learns very quickly that without God we can do nothing. We can That's, do nothing that, at all. Paul said the same. Paul said that in one of his epistles. Mm-hmm. You know, without without God we can do nothing. Jesus said it. Without That's Him right. you can do nothing. Right. Uh, so we, if when we lose when we lose sight of that, that's when all this stupid boasting comes in. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, number three on the list of recapping is quarreling and jealousy come from a milk diet. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but the power of peace comes from solid food, and that power of peace I'm talking about is the peace we have inside of each one of us that we don't have to be somebody because Jesus is that somebody inside of us. That's right. And you know, I like cereal as much as anybody else. That's right. But... It, you know, you should be craving right. better things. That's right. Ease up on the Captain Crunch, right? <laughs> so I think that That's uh, right. people should... need to realize what Paul's getting at. There's division. There's boasting. There's quarreling because some everyone wants to be important. And it's ugly. And Very it, ugly. it has no place in the body of Christ. Absolutely not. We should be thinking of others first, ourselves second. We are servants. We are servants. And I think that... It's a blessing to be a servant. Right. Everyone it's needs awesome. to realize it. it. Takes a lot of pressure off. Absolutely. It takes a lot of pressure off. Right. That's where the power of peace comes in because right. then we don't have to worry about competing with each other. No. And unfortunately, that still goes on because we still need to have sanctification. And we're encouraging everyone to pursue that through being a servant and the peace and it's, realizing it's not about what church you go to, the person you follow, or the fact that you need to worry about being with someone important, talented, and skilled, God died for you. You are important, talented, right. and skilled. Just bring that to bear as you mature in Christ. He's worth it. Absolutely. He's worth it. And, and sanctification is a wonderful process. Mm-hmm. It's not all a drudgery. It's not all work. You know, there are many benefits to it. Right. And walking closer to God is something that once you have done it, once you have tasted that, you can taste and see that the Lord is good. Right. Ah, you don't want to ever go back again. No, absolutely. That sustains us for sure. Now, we do want to invite you to come visit us at thetruthandthelife.com. And thank you. We'll see you on the way. To learn more about the way, visit thetruthandthelife.com. Send me a sunset of tomorrow